You already know that a solution can be formed when a solute and a solvent mix. But how much solute can you put into a solution? It turns out there's a limit, and that limit is called saturation. That's the most solute we can put in a solution in the long run. So in this lesson, we'll take a look at what makes a solution unsaturated, saturated, or even supersaturated. Let's learn. To get started thinking about how much solute a solvent can hold, let's consider adding sugar to this hot tea. If I add sugar to that hot tea, the sugar is the solute, it's the thing being dissolved, and the hot tea is my solvent. Similarly, I could add sugar to my iced tea. So I take sugar, I add it to the iced tea, and the sugar is the solute, and the iced tea is my solvent. Which one would dissolve the sugar more effectively? We know that it's the hot tea. And that's because hotter solvents can dissolve more solute. So the hotter something is, the more solute it can hold. As a side note, hotter things also just dissolve stuff faster, but what we're going to really focus on in this lesson is how much solute something can hold based on temperature. Let's look at that more closely. We're going to think about how much sugar water can hold. On our y-axis here, we have solubility, and on our x-axis, we have temperature. Now, the units for solubility, grams per 100 grams of solvent, is a little confusing, so we'll talk about that in just a second. Our temperature units are degrees Celsius. Pretty straightforward. It turns out, if I'm at 0 degrees Celsius, I can dissolve 180 grams of sugar. 180 grams sugar. So that means if we think about our solubility as a function of temperature, we'd have a point right there. What does that mean? Well, that means that if I took a container and I had 100 grams of water in it. That's my solvent, remember. And so here, no, notice that my solubility says per 100 grams of solvent. So that's what we've represented there. And then I come along and I add 180 grams of sugar to it. So that's a lot of sugar. In fact, more sugar is in there than water, 180 grams of sugar. And that would make a nice solution. So that's the most sugar that water could hold at that temperature in the long run, and it would mix together and make a nice solution. Now, that is a lot of sugar. How much could it hold at 60 degrees Celsius? Well, as it gets hotter, it can hold even more. And it turns out that at 60 degrees Celsius, it can hold about 300 grams of sugar. So that's one of the ways in which we see this same phenomenon where the hot tea can hold more sugar than the cold tea. And these two points are connected by a curve. And every single point along those curves tells you how much of my solute could be held per 100 grams of solvent. Okay, let's think about just this sugar solubility in more detail. And in a few minutes, we'll go and expand to other different solutes. All right, here is a much more nicely drawn chart that shows the sugar solubility per 100 grams of water. Now, what this line represents, this line right here, represents the concentration of solute, the amount of solute you would have in a saturated solution. It's a solution holding as much solvent as possible. And we saw, for example, at zero degrees Celsius that it's 180 grams, and at 60 degrees Celsius that it's about 300 grams, okay? So let me give you an example of a saturated solution. Here's an example. At 20 degrees Celsius, a maximum of 200 grams of sugar can be dissolved in 100 grams of water. And what we see there is if we go to 20 degrees Celsius, that's right here, and we go to 200 grams, that's about right there, we are right on that curve. So that curve represents the most sugar it could hold. Here's the trick though. It's not the most sugar it could hold ever, it's the most sugar it can hold in the long run. There's actually special unique things you can do to your solution to get it to even hold more than that. And when that happens, we call that super saturated. Super saturated solutions is how we make super sweet tea. All right, so if I wanna get a bunch of sugar in iced tea, the best way to do it is to make my tea hot. So right, I boil up my water, I add my tea bags, and then I add a ton of sugar while it's hot. Now I can cool it. And if I do that, I can kind of trick the solution into holding more than it wants to in the long run. And so what I could do is prepare a solution that had more sugar than that saturated line would suggest was possible. 
So a supersaturated solution is a solution holding more solute than is possible in the long run. Over the long run, what will happen is sugar will fall out of that solution. And in fact, if you've seen really, really sweet tea in the fridge, sometimes you'll notice that there's sugar at the bottom of that solution that's starting to fall out. And if you leave it there for long enough, it'll fall out and it'll come back to just a saturated solution. Let's look at an example of a supersaturated solution. A 20 degrees Celsius solution with 260 grams of sugar. So here's 20 degrees Celsius and here's 260 grams of sugar. Notice that point up there is way above that line. Okay, so that's super saturated. It's holding more than it will in the long run. And what's gonna happen over time is that sugar is gonna fall out of the solution. It's gonna become a solid at the bottom of the solution, no longer dissolved in it. And that dot will eventually, over the long run, come back down and sit right at that saturated line. But for a while, a sweet little while, you can have more sugar than in the long run is possible in your sweet tea to make sure it's extra, extra, extra sugary. Okay. Now, one other option here is that we could have an unsaturated solution. That's a solution holding less than the maximum solute at a given temperature. Let me give you an example of that. A solution at 20 degrees Celsius, that's right here, that holds 180 grams of sugar. So that 180 grams is right there. So we're talking about a point right there. Notice that that falls way below my line. So I could continue to add more sugar. It's not yet saturated. It doesn't have as much as possible. Okay, so we have three categories then of solution. We have an unsaturated solution. It's a solution holding less than the maximum of solute at a given temperature. A saturated solution. That's a solution holding the maximum amount of solute it can in the long run. And a super saturated solution. That's something holding more than it will in the long run. And when we look at this chart, everything that I'm going to highlight here in green, everything under that curve is unsaturated. So if I make a solution and it would be in that green region, it's unsaturated. The blue region is right on that line. So the saturated area makes up a pretty small portion of my graph here. It has to fall right on that line for my solution to be saturated. And then if I do my neat little trick where I mix it hot, I can make a super saturated solution. And that's everything above the curve that I've highlighted there in yellow. Okay, so that's the solubility of sugar. But it turns out that the solubility varies depending on the solute. So here's sugar. And then let's say we have potassium nitrate. Well, but the potassium nitrate curve goes all the way up right here. Okay. And so how much of a particular solute can be held by water depends on that exact solute. Some solutes dissolve very nicely in water and increase very rapidly with temperature. And some are pretty flat. So the solubility varies by solute. Let's now take a look at a few practice problems where we're going to identify if a solution is saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated. Okay, how do we do this? Well, what we're gonna do for A through D is we're gonna plot the temperature and mass on our curve, and then we're gonna highlight the correct solubility curve, and we're gonna compare that point to the curve. If it's above the curve, super saturated. On the curve, saturated. Below it, unsaturated. Let's give it a try. So here, we're gonna start with our 100 grams of KBR at 40 degrees Celsius. Let's start by putting a dot on the chart that represents 100 grams of KBR at 40 degrees Celsius. So here's 40 degrees Celsius, and here's 100. I go to where they meet. That's right there. Okay, and now what I need to do is highlight my KBR curve. My KBR curve is this one, and so I'm going to highlight that. It goes right here, and now notice that dot is above my curve, right? It's in what region would be highlighted yellow, the super saturated region. So I'm going to put in yellow, super saturated. Okay. Now let's go to problem B. So now after clearing off some space to write, we're gonna mark 20 grams of our sodium chloride, that's right there, at 80 degrees Celsius. That's right here. And now we see that those points meet right here. And we're gonna highlight my sodium chloride curve, which is right here, okay? Now that dot, is it above or below the curve? Now we see that it's below the curve. And remember, that means it could hold more. So that's an unsaturated solution. So I'm gonna put US in green. Okay, what about problem C? Now that we've cleared off our chart, let's plot 200 grams, which is about right here, and let's plot 20 degrees Celsius, which is this right here. Now, 
notice that that falls pretty much smack dab on that line. It can be really hard to tell if it's exactly on the line. So generally if textbooks or other questions ask you if it's saturated, if it looks like it falls pretty close to the line, they're trying to tell you we're talking about a saturated solution here. Really you'd need a little more detail on your chart to make 100% sure that it's on this line, but looks really close to on this line. And that means that when it falls right on the line, we call it saturated. So that's a saturated solution. It's holding as much as it can in the long run. Okay, let's clear off our space again. And then let's take a look at D. D says 140 grams of KNO3 at 60 degrees Celsius. So let's find 140 grams, that's right there. And let's find 60 degrees Celsius, that's right there. So those two points meet right there. And then we'll highlight KNO3 which is this big curve that goes up really quickly. So KNO3 really rapidly increases its solubility in water as you increase its temperature. Notice that once again falls above the curve. And so we call that super saturated. Okay, that's how you can tell using these solubility charts if a solution is saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated. Hey, hey.